In today's video we will take what we managed to do in the last video and use it to create a simple shooting game. Let's begin. Now we can start implementing some simple enemy AI. First create a new game object and call it enemy spawner. Next create a new c -sharp script with the same name, add it as a component to the enemy spawner game object and open that script. First let's declare the inspector variables. We will need a reference for the transform array which will hold all available positions for enemies to go to, a game object reference for the enemy prefab, a flow to define the interval in which we will spawn enemies, an integer which will limit the number of spawned enemies and a reference to the player's transform. We will also need a private list of game objects that will hold the already spawned enemies, a float which will count the time since the last enemy was spawned and an integer which will count the spawned enemy's number. In the start method let's initialize time since last spawn to spawn interval, that way we will instantly spawn the first enemy when starting the game. In the update method first we will increment the time since the last spawn by the time that has passed in this frame. Then we will check if we have waited long enough. If that's true we will reset the counter and check if the maximum number of enemies has been reached. If not, we can spawn a new enemy. Let's generate a method that will be responsible for spawning a single enemy. Right now we will simply instantiate an enemy prefab at a transform position and rotation and add this enemy instance to the spawned enemy list. Back in Unity find the character prefab that came with the polygon starter pack, place it in the scene, break the prefab connection and change its name to enemy. Create a new c -sharp script called enemy AI. Add it as a component to the enemy game object and open it up. First add a require component attribute of type navmeshagent and a unityengine.ai namespace and implement the itakedamage interface. Next declare three constant variables of type string that we will use as triggers for an animator component. We will need to trigger a running animation, a crouch animation and a shooting animation. Let's add a property for enemy health. In a getter we will simply return a health value and in a setter we will clamp a value between 0 and starting health. Let's add the starting health as the inspector field. Add the rest of the inspector fields. We will need a float for a minimum time under cover, a maximum time under cover, an integer for a minimum and a maximum number of shots that an enemy will take before hiding behind a cover again, a float for a rotation speed that will be applied when the enemy will shoot, a float to define the amount of damage that the enemy will give to the player. Let's also add a float for the shooting accuracy. We'll add a range attribute to that field clamping it between 0 and 100. And the last inspector field will be a reference for the blood splatter effect that we will play when we hit an enemy. Now the private fields. We will need a boolean that will inform us if an enemy is shooting, an integer to count shots taken, an integer to define how many shots the enemy should take, a reference to enough mesh agent component, a reference to the player's transform, a reference to the transform to which an enemy will go to when looking for cover and a reference to an animator component. In the awake method we will cache an animator and a navmesh agent reference, set an animator's trigger to run trigger and initialize the health variable with starting health value. Next let's add an init method that we will pass a cover transform and a player transform in its parameters. We will initialize our field variables with those values. After that we will make an enemy go to cover so let's add a method and generate it. In the go to cover method we will make sure that the navmesh agent component is not stopped and we will set its destination to the cover spot. Now let's add an update method. In this method we will check if the enemy is not stopped and if the enemy is close to the cover spot. If both of those conditions are met we can stop the navmesh agent component and start the initialized shooting coroutine. After that we will check if the enemy is currently shooting and if so we will rotate its transform to face the player. Let's generate both of those methods. In the initialized shooting coroutine we will first hide behind a cover, then wait some time that will be a random value between the minimum and the maximum time under cover 
After that time, we will start shooting. Generate the start shooting method. In the hide behind cover method, we will simply set the animator trigger to crouch. In the start shooting method, we will first set the is shooting flag to true. Then we will set the current max shot to random value between the minimum and the maximum shot to take values. Then we will reset the shots counter and set the animator trigger to shoot. Now we will declare a shoot method. This method will be called on an animation event. Here first we have to check if the enemy actually managed to hit the player. We will do it by comparing a random value between 0 and 100 to the enemy's shooting accuracy. If this condition is met, we will raycast in the direction from the enemy's position to the player's position. Let's add one more field for a reference to a transform that will hold a position in which the enemy will raycast from. Let's use that position to calculate the raycast direction. We will create one more script that will be hooked up to the player game object. So back in Unity, create a new c -sharp script called player, attach it to the XR rig game object and open it up. This will be a very simple script. We will need an inspector field for player health, a reference for the head transform. Let's also add a method that will give damage to the player. We could also use our iTech damage interface here, but because we don't need any references to a weapon or a projectile that the player is hit by, we can just make it as simple as that. Lastly, add a method that will return the head position. Back in Unity, set the inspector fields on the player component. Let's set health to 100 and assign the main camera game object to the head transform reference. Back in the enemy AI script, change the player reference type from transform to player. In the shoot method, we will use the player's head position to calculate a ray direction. If the ray hits something, we will check if this object has a player component, and if so, we will apply damage to the player. At the end, we will increment the shots counter and check if an enemy has shot the maximum number of times. If yes, then we will initialize the shooting coroutine again which will hide an enemy behind cover again. In the rotate towards player method, we will first find the direction vector from our enemy's position to the player's head. We set the Y component of direction to zero. Based on this vector, we will calculate the rotation using the quaternion.lookRotation method. And lastly, we will calculate the rotation that should be applied in a single frame using the quaternion.rotate towards method. In the take damage method, we will first subtract the weapon's damage value from the enemy health. Then we will check if health is less or equal zero, and if so, we will destroy the enemy game object. Lastly, we will instantiate the blood splatter effect in the contact point's position and rotation. The rotation will be calculated based on the direction vector from the contact point to the weapon. Then make sure that the effect is stopped and call the play method on the effect. Back in Unity, drag and drop the enemy game object to the prefabs folder and set the inspector values. You can use the same values as me or set them however you like. Now find the right thumb game object on the enemy, find the pistol prefab in the project and parent it under it. Under the weapon game object, and an empty game object that will be a position from which the enemy AI will rake us from. Add it as a reference in the enemy AI component. Now let's find some blood effect on the asset store. We'll find one in the simple FX cartoon particles pack. This pack is also made by Synthi Studios. Import this package. Find the blood splatter effect in the project. Place it in the scene and modify it a bit so it fits our level better. Now apply all changes to the prefab and assign it to the enemy AI component. To finish off our enemy, let's add a navmesh agent component to it. Now let's bake our level navmesh. First break the prefab instance on the level game object and move our weapons out from it. Then select the level game object and set it as a navigation static. Now go to the navigation tab and bake the navmesh with the default values. 
Let's take care of enemy cover and spawn positions. Set the enemy spawner game object's position in front of the house door. Now create three empty game objects that will act as enemy cover positions. Put them under the enemy spawner game object. Let's place them behind those walls with holes in them. Now set the inspector values in the enemy spawner component. Let's set the spawn interval to 10 and the max enemies to 3. Assign the extra rig game object as a player reference. In the enemy spawner script, change the enemy prefab preference from game object to enemy AI. In the spawn enemy method, after instantiating the player, let's declare an integer that will be an index in the spawn points array. The element in that index will be a transform holding a position which an enemy will go to. So next, call the init method on the created enemy instance with the player reference and the spawn point as parameters. Lastly, add the enemy instance to the spawned enemies list. We can actually get rid of the current enemies variable. We can get that value from the spawned enemies list count. In the rotate towards player method, we forgot to assign the calculated rotation to the transform rotation, so let's just do that. Back in Unity, apply all changes on the player game object to the prefab. Find the enemy spawner game object and finish filling the inspector values. Now, let's find some animations from Mixamo. The links are in the description below. Download all animations with skin and if possible, check the in place flag. Back in Unity, create a new folder called Animations and drag and drop all downloaded models with animations there. Next, in the same folder, create a new animation controller for our enemy. First, create an empty state called Entry. Next, create a state called Run and make a transition from Entry state to Run state. Then, create another state called Shoot and make a two-way transition between the Run and Shoot states. Now let's create three triggers that will control the transitions between the animation states. Remember to name them the same as in the enemy AI script. Before we add any transition conditions, let's change the animation type on the downloaded animations from generic to humanoid. We will move from the entry state to the run state on the run trigger. From the run state to the shoot state on the shoot trigger, remember to unsick the exit time and from the shoot state to the run state on the run trigger. Crouching should be done on a separate layer. The reason being we don't want to animate hands using data from the crouch animation. We still want to hold our gun and as we saw earlier the crouch animation animates hands in a different way. So let's create a new layer called bottom layer. Next create a new avatar mask called no hands mask. Let's maybe also change the layer name to no hands mask name bottom mask was not descriptive enough. Now open the layer settings and assign our mask. Now in the mask inspector uncheck hands and palms. Open the mask layer settings again and set the weight to 1. That way we will fully override the hand animation when the crouch animation is played. In the no hands layer mask add an empty state called entry and a state called crouch. Make a two way transition between them we will move from the entry state to the crouch state on the crouch trigger and from the crouch state to the entry state on the shoot trigger. Now let's change all animation names and check the loop time flag. Now assign the proper animations to the proper states. Let's change one thing, we will move from the shoot state to the run state on the crouch trigger. Open the enemy prefab, make sure that the animation controller is assigned and the avatar is set to the character avatar. Next, add a capsule collider component to the spine 01 game object, position it roughly in a way that covers the top portion of the body and make it a trigger. Let's fix the cover game objects and cover spot positions a little bit. And bake the nav mesh one more time. Make sure that all cover spots transforms are close to the ground. Now press play 
find one of the enemies, find his gun game object and change its transform so that the gun is pointing towards the player. Without exiting the play mode, copy the gun's transform component, exit the play mode and copy those values to the enemy prefab gun transform. Now let's add an animation event to the shoot animation and call the shoot method in this event. Set it just before the hand moves up. One last fix, in the physics projectile class, as well as in the raycast projectile class, we should find the I take damage components that are in parent of a hit game object, not its children. Now we are ready to test the finished project. So let's hit play and take a look. The enemies are spawning. Let's pick a gun and try to shoot one. That's not easy, but finally we have managed to do it. There is another one running to the second cover. Let's change position and weapon and try to shoot him. Now there is a third one. And that's it guys. You can find the whole project on GitHub in the description below. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like my content. There are new videos every Monday. Also leave a comment, I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Take care.